in I woke up to another edition of mentoring with Bla Adewara. Today uh, we're going to look at an issue in marriage we call for better for worse. And I'm sure so many of you have had it. Those of you who please uh, did your marriage your wedding in the proper way. Um, either through the English way or the traditional way. Um, the way we did it in the traditional way those days, or perhaps now, is that uh, uh, people will bring your father, your mother together, and like I keep telling people, immediately your parent accept that, yes, I accept you as the husband of my daughter, and the other side too, accept that we accept you as the wife of our son. Marriage is, I mean, a wedding is done. Marriage starts immediately. Uh, but there is the new way of doing things. That is, we call it the Oibo way, the church way. And that was where they started this issue of uh, marriage vows. And in marriage vows, they talk about uh, uh, the topics like, uh, I accept to marry you in good health and in bad health uh, we to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health until death do us part. This issue of these vows were things uh, uh, put together by the first church, the Catholic Church, and it is good to bind us together. But we find out that uh, the Monday reality is very different. So many people now use the marriage vows as uh, a thing to put other people into trouble. You'll find out that because we say for better, for worse, some people extend it like an elastic rubber to include things that are terrible. For instance, when you say for richer, for poorer, for this and for that, these are things that happened in marriage or things you have told I have done. I showed her who I am. She also showed me herself. And we all agreed, oh, I love you. I love you. We love women with your past. When I divulge the truth, of my life to her. And when she also divulges the truth of her life to me. But these days, what do we see? A party, especially most men, sometimes even women, they hold back some very vital information about their lives. Some very vital information that at the end of the day, when the lady finds out or when the man finds out, it's like, oh, why didn't you tell me this? I'll give you an example of what happened recently. And it was a very sad story. I'm to some of this is I've written. And this is my second book I called Marriage 40 Things You Must Know. Marriage 40 Things You Must Know. I had to put this together because I found that the current generation, they are not learning. And that is why the divorce rate is so heavy. Let me tell you, let me read uh, a particular portion. Uh, I call this chapter 17. And I'll read a particular portion to you there. As I was stepping into the exam hall sometime, let me put this down a bit. Sometime ago, my phone rang. It was a lady's voice. Obviously, she on a guy telling lies to women to which some people responded but I felt uncomfortable with the 
with some of the responses, especially those talking about for better, for worse. The lady wanted my go ahead so she could proceed with her desire to ask for a divorce. I refused to speak on that. I did not give her a clearance largely because I have not heard from the other party and I will not preside over any dissolution of any marriage. I did not say a thing largely because I was not angry at her husband or pity her situation, but I wanted to be sure of when the language for better for worse applies. Please, lawyers, pastors, Bible scholars, I want you to join me in explaining this issue of uh, for better or for worse. I may not know to what extent ladies who find themselves in situations like these are also capable, culpable. I know that so many ladies were carried away by fashion, glittering, glittering lives, but it does not give any man the green light to come into marriage with lies. A guy came into marriage with dirty hands and dirty lies, lies upon lies, forged certificates. He claimed to be a graduate, which he was not. Mommy, he claimed his mommy lives abroad. It was a lie. All he presented to the lady were all lies. In that marriage, is that marriage to such an extent that the lady found out that her husband is a featherweight. He has no substance whatsoever. All she told her friends and family of her husband were lies. He was not working and practically unemployable. He lived on the university campus for five years and yet he was not a student. He took pictures with NYSE uniform and placed such pictures on his walls and yet he did not serve anywhere. And these are some of the things some of our ladies see as qualification before they fall in love with you. It is expected that when caught in, both parties should disclose their strengths and their weaknesses. Pluses and minuses. On that day, the contract is signed. When later in marriage, a party discovered that the other party had come into the contract lying, depending on the weight of the lies and the ability of the other party to cope, I guess that contract is a nullity. For better for worse applies in a marriage when both parties went into it with full knowledge, understanding, and acceptance of the pluses and minus of each other. Also, if an untoward accident or incident happened during the marriage, you are bound by the author for better for worse to remain there. But that someone came into marriage with hidden agenda, deliberate falsehood, neatly kept away. I wonder if that marriage can stand. The Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3 that when the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? Let the truth be told and may God forbid this. If any of my daughter find herself in a situation like this, I will give my full support to pulling out of that stupid bondage erroneously called marriage. I want to put some things there to you. This was a guy who lied, told terrible lies. He was not a university graduate. In fact, he could not even do anything. He told this lady, I work in this company. I work in that company. The lady believed, and you know so many of these ladies, once they are blinded by love, they don't get to check some things that our fathers will do those days. Our fathers want to know your family. We have issues. We don't, we, we die at age 40. We have uh, causes that is troubling many of us. Many women marry men without knowing what they are doing. Then you get in that marriage, you start running from pillar to post. My sister, I warn you today, the very person you want to marry, do your research. Do your research properly. My guy, that lady you want to marry, do your research properly. There is a, it's not just about guys. Even the women. There was a guy who got married to a lady and the lady had no womb. Of course, I'm not saying there's nothing God cannot do. But do you know how long it took them 
They started praying, running here, running there, until a doctor confessed that this lady had done abortion before and the womb had been punctured, the womb in fact had been removed, and the lady did not tell him. And then they got married, they started running from pillar to post. At the end of the day, you will look at the matter. Look, some of us will say, why are you saying this? Yes, I'm saying this because even you, if that guy is your son, how will you feel that a lady had come to deceive your guy for seven, your son for seven years, eight years, you were praying, you were moving from one prophet to the other, you were moving from one mountain to the other, and at the end of the day, you find out that this lady lied to you. These are some of the things I bring to you this morning. For better, for worse is established only when you know the whole truth involved. When the lady told you, look, I am this, I am that, I, the guy told you, look, I have not gone to the university. You might see me, I speak good English. You might see me, I dress very well. I've not gone to the university. I'm just a struggler. If the lady accepts you that way, beautiful. You can plead your case anywhere that I told you I'm not a graduate. I told you I've not done this. I told you I don't even have a house. And you accepted me. Why are you treating me this way now? But you neatly hid all this is away from the guy. And the lady discovered later. I have seen so many marriages collapse. Recently, one even collapsed when the lady found out that, well, uh, there are options before her. As a Christian, she said, I will forgive him. Let me forgive him. She came to me. I took her to some of my mentors. They told her, forgive him. And the lady said, okay, I will forgive him. But don't mind, don't forget that that lady has that pain deep in her. She told me later that, look, anytime she sees her husband, that pain comes back. And it becomes difficult for her to forget things. At the end of the day, the lady was told, I'll tell your man to bring his certificates, to bring this, to bring that. The lady found out that, look, this man could not even do anything. And the man had made up his mind right from the beginning that, look, she's, he will live all his life on the one. Uh, because the lady has brothers abroad. Many of She's the only one in Nigeria. And the plan of the guy was that, oh, her brothers will sponsor our travel to America. When I get to America, I will show her, I will just run. That was his plan. And at the end of the day, this lady find out. Tell me, how many ladies will give such things? Or a lady who had gone all over the place, claimed, oh, my husband is the product of Ife. My husband is the product of Ife. And then she went to drop the man's name among the, what do you call it, uh, the old student association. And later they look at those and they said, look, there is no man bearing this name here. And it was then they found out that it was a lie. In fact, the lady went to the university, went to the department, claimed the year and everything there. They said, look, there's no one like that here. And the lady now came back home and called the man. I'm just coming from your university. Then they said, uh, actually, uh, I was in university, but uh, I was educated. I was this and that. In fact, you were, you were, if you know Ife very well, we call them SUB boys. Student Union Building Boys. They are not students, but there are so many. They just remain there, doing nothing. When they are on holiday, they will follow everybody, they will go back home. to think they are university students. It's not just about university students. It's so many things in life. Therefore, what I bring to you today that there are two options. You can choose to give just as Jesus Christ wants us to do. But when it comes to a stage that you are living in delirium, a stage whereby you cannot just continue rather than giving things, rather than high blood pressure, there was no marriage in the first instance. The marriage, that kind of marriage, is dead on arrival. If any man told you big 
lies. Because when you and then you now got into marriage and you found that everything he told you were lies. My sister, no marriage was conducted in the first instance. There was no marriage. So I want to advise you in a mentoring mode this morning. Do your due diligence. When a lady tells you, I am this, I am that, find out. Try to meet the parent. Perhaps even go to the hospital. I am not saying pick her and go and start making love or start marriage. Some of us did all these things before. But we thank God that for, we thank for forgiveness. And today we know better. Rather than say, I want to test, go to the hospital and do your testing. Go to the hospital and find out what diseases are in her. If a lady is HIV positive and she hid that from you and she affected you with that disease, then you now say, oh, what do I do? When love closes your eyes, marriage will open it. Let me tell you again. When you say love is blind, marriage will open that blind eyes. And what? This is mentoring. And I hope that you must have learned one or two things. I pray that your marriage will be a happy one. If you have found yourself in situations like these in life, well, there are two options open to you. Forgiveness. I wish you can forgive. I wish you can forgive and assist that man or that woman to Get up in life again. If it's a matter that has to do with, with health, I wish you can go to God in prayer. There is nothing God cannot do. There is nothing God cannot do once there is genuine repentance. But when you know that the other party knows nothing about God and it's you and is putting you into trouble, my sister, I tell you the third option, there was no marriage in the first instance. The Bible says when the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for watching. Marriage, 40 things you must know. God bless you. Bola Adewara here, I sign off.